Hi, I'm Andre Kuzniarek, Executive Director at Wolfram Research for Document Systems. Uh, I'm here to give a talk on how we are doubling down on our notebook technology going forward and pretty much demonstrating all the features of uh, deployment options that we have. All right, let's get started here. Um, so I'm Andre Kuzniarek, uh, Director of Document and Media Systems at Wolfram. Um, for years, I give talks on some of the, uh, the uh, side uh, methods or side usage of our notebook technologies for uh, deployment, uh, particularly for applications, um, and particularly based on the CDF concept that we had been pushing for uh, a little over um, a decade now. Um, and uh, while that concept still stands, it's a, it's a descriptor of the underlying uh, specification and technology that makes notebooks work. Uh, as Stephen indicated in his keynote last night, um, we've really come around to uh, the world accepting the concept of notebooks and embracing it. And um, since you know we kind of started that party, we don't want to be left out. Uh, and we really feel like as a, you know, as a branding exercise, it's really more important to stick with notebooks and, and put them front and center again. So we're doubling down on that concept. And uh, as I had indicated uh, last year, um, you know, we're, we're essentially joining a, a growing group of, of notebook technologies or usage out in the world. Um, I'm pointing out here this, uh, the blog post from uh, Stephen that uh, promotes where we stand now with uh, our emphasis on how um, you can readily publish, if you want to use the word publish, deploy um, notebooks uh, online, on the web, uh, pretty much as simple as choosing a menu item and pushing the button and putting it up. Um, so, you know, this is a case uh, where a whole lot of work goes into making something look simple, right, and easy breezy. Uh, and it's particularly the case that uh, with um, the way, uh, you know, others have been bringing notebooks out into the world, they're just doing it on the web. Uh, and for us, you know, we, we've taken a bit of extra time to get to that point because we don't just want static documents on the web, you know, or we don't just want uh, static HTML with bits of interactive code on the web. We want the entire notebook experience to be available to people. Um, by default, that means for the, the free usage, very much like it's been in the, in, when we've used the player, um, you, you put it up, you've got uh, interactive through manipulates and, and other kinds of standard things that have always been true when you use CDF player on the desktop it remains true in the cloud. Um, and as long as uh, you know, you're using this material for your use, uh, for the public good, we're, we're, you know, we don't have a problem with it. We want everybody to start using this stuff. Um, so uh, this talk is, is you know, just breaking down some of the details of the steps. Stephen kind of showed this stuff. I'm just highlighting points in his blog that are worth noting, uh, particularly that um, even though, uh, you know, we're putting notebooks in the cloud, they're not always 100%. Uh, I mean, I certainly am front line of hearing from people who may have issues when they try things. Uh, and the important fact is that you know, being in the cloud doesn't mean you have to use it on the web. It's there, people can see it, you, you, you see the notebook. If there's an issue with it, it's still downloadable and you can still get the usual desktop experience you always want. Uh, and so there's still always the player, right? So uh, the player concept is, is kind of where it's always been in terms of, you know, it's a binary, you come to our site, you, you grab the file, you download it. Um, we've made that uh, as simple as possible. We don't require anybody to register themselves. You know, if, you, if you've got users who are shy, you know, uh, you can tell them. They don't even have to give us their email. They can get the player. That's not a problem for us. Now, uh, if for some reason they do want to give us their email or tell us a little bit about them, because we will ask those questions, 
we follow the protocol established by the GDPR rules from Europe. So, you know, everything about checking the box that says that we're making you aware that we are keeping track of this information uh, is all being built into our download form. But it's, that's all entirely optional. You could just go there and grab it. Um, so the, I think that the main point about where we are with player and notebooks right now uh, is that the behavior of a notebook that you save for Mathematica without saying anything, doing anything special, is the same as it would have been in the past where we asked you to export it or save as CDF, right? We made you go to an extra step because we were being a little bit over, I would say overly protective of what we're letting people put out in the world. Uh, and the notebooks had to be signed, you know, by a hash that, you know, gave it a secure identity that let our player recognize that it came from us, right? We're not doing that right now. So uh, what that means is that it, there, there's two aspects of that, but the, the simplest fact is that it just works. So yay, great, right? Um, I'll get to what that means in terms of what we used to make claims about how our licensing worked for CDF. Again, that's simpler now too. Um, it's still the case that um, you can upgrade the player to Player Pro. That's the concept we had for a long time, which is you might have users uh, that are willing to pay uh, a per seat of this player that is enhanced for uh, more capabilities than you get just with the plain uh, player level. Um, so that still works. And for now, um, it, it's still true uh, that we have enterprise capability of exporting notebooks. Uh, and, and that will still be, for now, uh, indicated or, or saved as a, a CDF file because that we still have a lot of deployment code uh, functionality for, for doing deployments. We don't want to tear things apart for people who are doing uh, application development, right? And it still works the same way for that. Yeah, I mean, uh, John is here from the front end group, and, and we, we, we're still backward compatible to MA files, right? And yeah. things like that, so. Stephen's opening file from version two earlier. <laughs> right. That's 1993. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, we, we, you won't lose out on any of that. Um, iOS, uh, you know, is, is pretty cool right now that uh, we've got a player working both on iPad and on iPhones. Um, and that you can open uh, the notebook there. Um, but on iOS, the default behavior is that there's no interaction, but if you've got a login because you've got a, uh, a cloud subscription with us, you'll, you can log in on your player and you'll automatically have the interactive features. Or you yourself or people that you're sending it to can do a one-time in-app purchase uh, for nine bucks or 10 bucks and they'll get uh, uh, interactivity with any notebook they ever get. You know, it's not just for the one time. Um, um, yeah. We'll give you the interactivity too, but yeah. but it's I, I didn't really want to bring that up exactly because it's a little confusing because it doesn't give you more. It just it gives you uh, uh, the interactivity. Um, but yes, um, so you can provide it to people if you're an enterprise user, and it'll just work. Um, so manipulates and, and graphics and things like that, but not the normal enterprise level features, which is, a, you know, interacting with your, uh, with your system, right? With your, with your uh, hard drive, you know, that kind of thing is still sandboxed in our, in our apps. Um, all right, so uh, Cloud App is also available as a, as a way to use notebooks. Um, so you can actually construct a notebook using Cloud App on your phone. I can't, you know, it's, it's supposed to be UX optimized for uh, mobile use. I can't say that's the most realistic thing to do, but, you know, if you ever have to jump in on something or edit something, you can. Um, so back to the point about notebooks just work. Um, the, the rules for those are simpler now. We're really just making the distinction between whether you're, you're using it personally and, and keeping it publicly available um, or if you're doing uh, commercial distribution. You know? So if you're a publisher and you're putting something out in the world where you obviously want to control all the aspects of it, 
um, then that's an uh, arrangement you make with us as a revenue share or a purchase of seats. Um, and again, as I mentioned, Enterprise continues to go out the door as Enterprise CD F when you want those kinds of features. Uh, we're we're going to make a transition in a few more releases ahead where eventually um, we'll, it, Enterprise signing will be done to regular notebooks. Uh, and we, we just have to get the UX sorted out for that so that that's clear for everybody. Um, we've got a page online, uh, this is very small, um, uh, going into just explaining the, the licensing and we've got some of the same facts that we've had in the past for well, when we explain things for CDF. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about how we're deploying notebooks these days. Um, so uh, one of the coolest things, uh, of course, you know, cloud, uh, but that we've got uh, this embedder. Um, it's, uh, uh, this is coded uh, in JavaScript, uh, and uh, so, um, and, and the idea behind it is to go beyond just uh, basic iframes. If you guys know HTML a little bit, um, you know, an iframe is a container that cuts itself into a web page, and you can put any HTML uh, URL, like any document that's served on the web inside that iframe. So that's a way to say you support embedding, uh, but we, we really want the integration of notebooks into your HTML to be smoother than that. You know, we don't want it to be uh, in such a rigorous container that causes its own scrolling behaviors within a, a window that is separately scrolling. It's kind of clunky. It, it's, it's very old school. Um, so um, I think the impact of, of this JavaScript embedding feature is going to be great. It, it gives, you know, particularly publishers and, and people who are working hard to make uh, really nice deployments, it gives them a lot of flexibility. And you're going to see that in uh, lots of the things we've been putting out in the world, um, like, for example, Notebook Archive. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, when Stephen was showing this last night, he had some trouble. I don't know why his thumbnails didn't render. Um, but, uh, you know, we've been collecting a lot of material. We've, we announced this uh, a year or so ago and building up what's available. Now, many of you are old timers and have a lot of content and you might find some of your stuff from Math Source, but uh, you'll have to look for it and see if it's there. And if you don't see it immediately, it might be because it's old and we've got a switch here that says include legacy content so that even older stuff will show up. Uh, I don't know if I made that switch work successfully here because maybe there wasn't any, but uh, the point is if you're not seeing it immediately, look at, at, at switching the, the search results here. Um, okay, so, um, well actually, I, I, before I jump away from that, I should just show one of these. So uh, again, this is embedded uh, separately from, uh, uh, you know, the iframe method, it gives us a little more control and I'll show you some better examples, but in all cases, we always want to emphasize you can download what's there, you can open it into your own cloud account, uh, and there's going to be other things that show up here. Um, the submission process uh, uh, lets you set uh, the terms of use. Um, you know, if you're somebody who wants to reserve the rights here, it means that you're submitting it for the archive, but only for the archive. And it's not for anybody to just grab it and redistribute it from there. But if, you're, if you like the idea that, hey, this is an open access kind of document, I want anybody to have it anywhere, you can choose different rights of submission. Uh, th this is, if you're familiar with archive.org, you know, it's not that different from uh, preprint servers uh, that have been doing this for a long time. Uh, as we've seen demonstrations, um, we, uh, we've been updating these uh, to function essentially as embedded content as well. Um, in this case, you get a, a preview uh, animation of what's, what's there, and then you see the actual uh, embedded cloud object come in, and now this is the thing I can interact with. 
Um, and again, embed code is provided here. So this is the JavaScript embedder. It's copy to clipboard. Or if you want to do the iframe method, that's available to you here too. Um, you can also you know, copy the code to the clipboard, paste it in your notebook. Steven loves to do that. Uh, source variations available here. And again, download the desktop. So you know, as a resource, you know, our demonstration site is kind of like our premier archive demonstrating all the bells and whistles of the kinds of things we like to do and offer. Um, so, um, you know, if you've got stuff you want to submit there, it gets the full-blown treatment. I haven't looked at it for a long time. Demonstrations still all have to be wrapped in a manipulation? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the idea behind it. Um, and now, if, if you've got notebooks that are not that, then use the archive, you know, use the notebook archive and all of that, and you can point to things that way. So uh, Stephen had shown this example. Um, we are putting notebooks in the cloud. Again, that's being done with that JavaScript embedding. And what that means is you can control whether or not there's any kind of visible border or whether you're showing cell brackets or not and that the content scrolls with the window as it scrolls. So it's integrated. It feels like part of the whole thing. Um, and uh, this is, you know, a live manipulate as well. Uh, whoops, uh, let me, I showed that scroll away too fast, you know, rotatable graphics. Um, so I just want to uh, demonstrate real fast uh, that process of putting something in here is pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, the point being that, you know, when you start a discussion here, uh, you know, put in your title, whatever it is, and we now have in this add notebook button, um, we're calling it beta because uh, we're, we're, we just got this up for everybody to try it here. It's pretty straightforward, but what you're pasting here is the, the cloud object from when you publish your, your notebook. So uh, I could show that real fast. So let me um, demonstrate that point real quickly. Uh, if I can get back to uh, Mathematica and So, you know, the point being here, I want to publish that. So let's publish it to cloud. Um, and I just go ahead, uh, copy to clipboard, the thing that I've just published. And uh, let's get back to this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. And so this is previewed down here. And um, I should throw this away after today. It makes me look a little foolish, but I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And I have to do which? Uh, just scroll up a little bit, scroll click. OK. Scroll up. And there are two upper. Do you see up the question or share idea? Uh -huh. I, I have to pick one. Yeah. OK. I'm, I'm sharing a big idea here. Just, OK, 3D printing, whatever. Yeah, so. Okay, thanks, Vitaly. Uh, Vitaly is our community director, so uh, uh, I, I have to do a better description. It was the CSO that was like that, but you can say it has several times. Uh, okay, so, uh, whoops. Is it, is it those slides for Testing the slides? this for the conference. Yeah. All right, let's see how that goes. Hey, there it is. Uh, it's even got my picture on it. Um, so, um, yep, yeah, so there you go. Um, and, you know, what the idea here that we like is because there's already metadata at the top of the notebook you're publishing uh, for the, the community post itself, you don't necessarily have to reiterate the title and your name and all that stuff. The post is just the body content. Now, will make this a little more sophisticated. You know, at some point, you know, people, when you're writing a notebook, you always put a title, you know, you always put everything at the top that you want. We're gonna make this sophisticated enough to recognize that that's there, and if it's duplicated in your post, we'll just remove it, you know, but that, that's gonna take a little more time. But, you know, this is a big deal, and this is gonna have a really nice impact, I think. Um, so, all right, let's get back to uh, where I was. Um, 
You and your math source, you guys. Uh, yes, uh, well, as I indicated, we are mining math source for the notebook archive. So it, it's not going to go in the community. I, I don't, Vitaly, I don't think you guys are trying to dig stuff out of math source for that. Well, That's kind of up to users to, to put it there, yeah, right? If, if you do stuff in the community, yeah. So um, I want to show what we're doing on GitHub as well. And John is here. He might, you know, take questions about that later if you all want. But uh, so uh, when putting notebook content in GitHub right now, um, you do have the means of making it more viewable uh, because of this uh, GitHub viewer feature that uh, is available as a forum online to exploit. Uh, but um, I, I'm just showing it really quickly uh, in terms of looking at what's in here. Um, I, I don't know how, there you go. So, you know, you, this is all, you know, using GitHub as a way to access our stuff. Um, so that, that I find pretty handy as well. Um, okay, and then um, let me talk quick. Yeah. Uh, the capability is, right, if you go yeah, through so our form. We have, we have a broadly advertised form, but you can get to the form from any existing repo that you know, that's already used it. So, yeah. so let me speak quickly to, uh, besides doing things online, but, you know, that is the way of the future. That's where everybody goes. Um, you know, I've promoted at the conference here pretty regularly this notion of a portable CDF player, and that's something Mark and Ariel have done with their data modeler product, uh, which is taking, uh, since CD, uh, well, the Wolfram player, uh, since the Wolfram player is, uh, is already activated, it, it, you know, you don't have to individually activate it. It just runs on your system. Um, you can distribute it with all of your content, with your full application. So, so if you don't mind a zip file or whatever, or a thumb drive that's got potentially the player for every platform you want to support, so Windows and, and Mac on the same thumb drive, along with all of your application content, and then this little, uh, a little bit of a, a Java applet we have that does the right selecting of the player, you could stick that thumb drive in a computer and run your application on any machine, right? So it's a really nice feature. These guys particularly like it. That's how they distribute their application to their customers. Uh, then uh, another concept we've been doing lately is um, the idea of uh, ebook distribution based on notebooks that has a certain amount of DRM built into it. And the way that works for us is um, you essentially uh, you get at you you, you point to uh, your you know you sell a book on our store, uh, and uh, when the person buys it, um, they get a download of the book contents, uh, and they when they run what's been downloaded, they're asked for their Wolfram ID and the order number ID, uh, and that is combined with the machine ID. So those three pieces of information essentially lock the application to that, that computer. Now, when I say lock, it just means that, that we have encoded for the benefit of the author, or the author does it themselves, certain aspects of their notebooks that either obscure, say, the style sheet so that what the person's looking at isn't visible unless it's properly activated, or if they're running a package, you know, .m code, um, it can encode some of that. So now people can get around this. I'm not making any claims that this is like so secure that nobody can break it. But the point is, particularly for Keith Stroyan, that his students needed to recognize that the textbook he sold to them for use at his school, which is a site license for Mathematica, his students needed to recognize that this was intellectual property and that they shouldn't just give copies of it to all their friends, right? And, and it's like a two-way street. You have to make a certain commitment to protecting it, and that communicates to the customer that, oh, I get it. I'm not really allowed to steal this, right? If they're going to go to so much trouble to reverse engineer it, well, they're clever and they're crooks, right? So um, this has been working pretty well, and, and I can recommend it wholeheartedly for anybody who's got book content they want to put out. Uh, we can make this work pretty well. And in the case of Bruce Schneider, 
his content isn't even about Mathematica. It's just he liked it as a deployment method for the content he wanted to put out. So it's a little bit you know, obscure for me to offer that up as an example, but it works for him. You know, he was familiar with our language, and he just found it very practical. Uh, well, if you're upgrading your machine, it might just be the case that, that you have to get in touch with us and we can get you an upgrade based on it. This is, it's not, I'm not proposing that this is a solution that's going to carry you for 10 years of product use. Right now, these are educators and it's for their students to get by in a semester, you know, and it goes quickly. They, they, it, it's somewhat disposable for their needs, right, as a lot of textbook purchases are for students. I'm not saying it's that way forever, but that's kind of how we've put it together right now. So, um, all right, so um, I'm gonna wind down here, but I just wanna give pointers out to the sort of updated information we have everywhere online. So um, for, uh, for telling our story of notebooks, uh, we put together uh, this, what we call a feature set page uh, that goes into detail about our message, about the features, about um, examples sort of called out how our, our system works, um, you know, what you get with it and everything. And so if, you know, if somehow you need to communicate to people what, you know, our stuff's about, this is always a good place to go. Um, similarly, uh, as we saw, Stephen's been uh, blogging about various things related to notebooks, uh, including a bunch of these others that are relevant. Um, so it's you know always worth going back to his blog. Um, we have uh, my team. Uh, the one of the teams that I run is our Wolfram U group, uh, and uh, we just completed uh, a course on using notebooks. Um, uh, Dave Widoff has been doing some of what I think are best uh, course materials for these interactive MOOC style courses, uh, where the idea is that. Um, you're able to both watch videos and uh, follow along in notebook content that you can copy uh, and put in a scratch pad to interact with while you're watching things on video. Um, uh, this uh, interface allows you to you know, scale what you view and everything. It's fairly practical for everybody. Um, we're, we're putting a lot of courses out this way uh, and the ultimate goal for us is to have a pretty um, straightforward framework where you provide the notebooks, you provide the videos, you provide a manifest of, you know, the structure of your course, you push a button and poosh, it just puts it all up on the cloud for you. Uh, not there yet, but we'll be there shortly. Uh, all right. Uh, I mentioned Wolfram Player and iOS Player, and then uh, Stephen uh, previewed Notebook Edition for Wolfram Alpha. So, uh, of course, story's not over, more to come but I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you.